Join us as we tackle school holidays in Margaret River with some social media versus reality moments. Margaret River region in southwest of WA is renowned for its stunning coastline, beautiful beaches, food and beverage culture, and attractions including a huge lighthouse and incredible caves. We also get to meet some locals at Hamlin Bay. Join a tour to explore the amazing Jewel Cave, go snorkeling and enjoy some beaches, and Alan does a tasting paddle at pretty much every brewery in the region. While we don't make a huge amount of money off of YouTube ad revenue, we have decided that we're going to donate 10% every month to a charity of our choice. If you could continue to watch the ads throughout our episode, that would make a huge difference to us and to the charities that we choose to support. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Margaret River Region. Now, we, where actually are we? We are staying about five minutes outside of Margaret River. Mm. Mm. At a campground, I suppose yeah, you'd say. it's kind of a property out the back of a, a person's house or a couple of people's house. Um, Twenty-five bucks a night, which, as far as we can tell, anywhere around this region is very, very cheap. Because it would normally cost a lot. It's only Wednesday after Easter at the moment as well, and it's school holidays. But there's only five other vans here at the moment, so it's actually quite nice and quiet. Yep. Well, like I said, we're here four nights. We've got plenty of breweries to go to, plenty of wineries to go to. Some places for Jess that we've got to go to. Yes. Chocolate and cheese. Food. Food in general. And we're also going to go to a heap of beaches and snorkeling and all that sort of gear. Work off the food and beer. To work off the food and beer. Oh, and we're going to go see some stingrays. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, as for today though, I'm going to finish up my second coffee and we're going to head out to our first brewery of this little area. Bye for now. the Hazy Pale Ale, the New England Pale Ale, and the IPA. Finished up at CB Co Brewery. Yeah. Awesome beers. Good food. Which is one question for you guys, actually. Um, you may have noticed that the pizza that we had had broccoli, broccoli on it. Now, I thought it was quite tasty. I've never had broccoli on a pizza, was but it, it tasted good. Good. Let us know in the comments if you'd actually put broccoli on a pizza or if you'd eat broccoli on a pizza. It's something different. Yeah. Anyways, we are off to the next place, which is a spot for Jess this time. Yeah. Yeah. See you there. Bye. I'm very impressed at your restraint. Yeah. Only a small tub of ice cream. Yes. Any small. Raspberry white chalk. Can't go wrong. Didn't spill a drop. Well done. What did we get? Uh, River Dog. Very West nice. Coast IPA. Absolute cracker of an afternoon exploring around a few places to eat and drink around Margaret River. Um, ate too much, drank too much, pretty pretty standard. Now we've just come back out to camp and the place we're staying at is called Glenbrook Camping on Wiki Camps. Now they only do small allocations of campers in here so it keeps it nice and private and quiet and all that sort of thing so it's really quite cool. Um, nice bush camping sites and everything like that. It's only 25 bucks a night too so quite cheap for Margaret River region. Uh, at the moment, I think Jess is going to do a workout of all things. Keeps fit for both of us. And I'm probably going to have another couple of beers. 
either way we will see you tomorrow morning because we're going to get up and do sunrise somewhere really really quite special so see you tomorrow The next morning, we made the 30 minute drive down to Hamlin Bay to see what can only be described as a truly magical sunrise. The ruins of the old jetty, the beautiful white sand and the gentle waves lapping at the shore made for a very, very peaceful start to the day. The incredible sunrise wasn't the only reason we were at Hamlin Bay, of course. Hamlin Bay is well known for the stingrays that come in to feed along the shoreline early in the morning. There are normally black rays, smooth rays and if you're lucky enough you might even spot an eagle ray gliding through the shallows. While we didn't have the best weather for this experience, it was still incredible seeing these creatures cruising along the coast. Some of the stingrays that frequent the area have a wingspan of over 2 metres and can weigh up to 200 kilograms. If you're lucky, they might come in really close to you and brush up over your feet, but as tempting as it may be to pat or feed these beautiful creatures, they are wild animals and should be left alone. Yeah, that was unreal. A um, few big, big um, black rays and smooth ray and little eagle ray that was out there as well. That was really, really cool. Um, I'd probably suggest wearing bathers, not jeans like I was wearing. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was, that was really, really cool. Really enjoyed that. They, they come right up to you. They swim over your feet and yeah. And how long have you been wanting to do that for? Oh, a long time. Oh, oh, two, three, four, five years, something like that. I've heard about this place and been wanting to come in and yeah, it was great. Because the weather was not the world's best, there was nobody else around as well. So it's nice and peaceful, nice and quiet. It was quite windy, wasn't it? It was windy, but thankfully underwater, the rays don't know it's windy. True. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to get organised because we're heading off to the next spot. We're not sure where that is, but we'll find out when we get there. Forty-five kilometres south of Margaret River, you will find Jewel Cave. Jewel Cave was first opened to the public on the 26th of December 1959, and it is the largest show cave in Western Australia. It comprises of three huge chambers and stretches of well over a three-kilometre span. The one-hour guided tour takes you down 250 stairs to the base of the first of three chambers, which has a depth of just over 42 metres. During the tour, you will see magical formations of stalactites, stalagmites, helictites, cave coral, pendulites, and flowstone. Some examples of the flowstone are the frozen waterfall and the organ pipes. Form and come back in 400,000 years, they might be joined together. Jewel Cave is also home to a large stalagmite, which they have named the Carrie Forest. 
It also houses one of the largest straw stalactites in all of Australia with a massive length of 5.43 metres. During early exploration of the cave, they even discovered the remains of a Tasmanian tiger and there is a replica of it in the Discovery Centre. As the tour finishes, you retrace your steps back up the 250 stairs, so a moderate level of fitness is required for this tour. We just finished up in Jewel Cave, what did you think? I think it was a pretty good tour. Um, the tour guide Lily was really informative. Uh, it was beautiful, big cavern, lots of information was given. Um, it was an hour long tour and it cost us $24 per adult. And yeah, I really loved it. Really had a good time. Um, one of the last things you see on the way out is a thing that says 500 steps, that deserves a treat. So I think we go have some breakfast. Because, I think we um, need breakfast. Just after 10.30 and we haven't eaten yet today. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Bakery? No. We've got cereal. Bakery. Fine. Well, isn't this typical? Bakery? Yeah. Yeah, and we scored a car park smack bang straight out of the front. So it was meant to be. Mm-hmm. Steak, bacon and cheese pie come at me. Yeah. But well, there's all the foods right there. Sorry, yeah, chunky steak, tuck the war. Chunky steak, cheese, and bacon. Okay then. After consuming our body weight in bakery food, we headed further south towards the Cape Lewin Lighthouse. Heritage passes to explore the grounds and the interpretive centre are available for purchase on site at $7.50 per adult. Alternatively, you can do the guided lighthouse tour which is $21 per adult. The historic Cape Lewin Lighthouse was constructed in 1895 from local limestone and comes in at 39 metres tall. It is also located where the Southern and Indian Ocean meet and it is also the most southwestern point of mainland Australia. Been on a bit of a Jess detour, haven't we? We have. What did you spot on Wiki Camps? A free cave called Bride Cave. Bride Cave. Now, I'm going to keep the camera on you, but can you read to me uh, this one just here? Uh, Tourist trips to the cave stopped when a bushfire burnt the entrance gate and the top of the stairs. The only way down now is by rope or caving ladder. Yeah, and then this one over here says it's about 30 metres to the bottom. Yeah, okay, we're not going down. <laughs> Let's still go have a look. We'll have a look. Gotta love Jess Detours. <laughs> your cave didn't we yeah what do you think there's a reason why it's free which is you have to actually get permits to be able to abseil to go into the cave <laughs> it's just a big huge crater which would actually be really quite cool to um abseil into but we don't exactly abseil or rock climb or anything i don't know you've got your safety boots on hiking shoes <laughs> on to the next thing let's go no more Jess detours. Where are we off to? Uh, I got thirsty. So I'm going to go have a drink. 
So a coffee shop. I've had three coffees today. <laughs> I probably don't need a need a fourth coffee. So a brewery then. You said the B word, so that's exactly where we are going. Excellent. Safe to say that the beers at Beer Farm Brewery were absolutely fantastic. We finished up there, got a couple of takeaways, went back to camp, had them, fell asleep and didn't film anything. So here we are in the car the next day, heading out to somewhere that we believe and have been told should be quite special. Good morning. Good morning. Well, it's been an absolute chaotic start to the morning. Hasn't it just? A uh, bit of a slow start to the day. We got up late, had some breakfast, all that sort of thing, which was great. And then we thought we'll go for a bit of a drive and head to Injun Up Natural Spa. Yep. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Probably not. But. Um, now we got here at about 10.30 I think it was and we thought you know it might be a little bit busy. Wrong time. Wrong, wrong time. time. Very much wrong time. Uh, so look what we'll do is we'll show you the pretty clips and then we'll show you what it was actually like and then we'll let you know where we're going to be going from from here today. Yeah. Have fun. Bye. Ten minute drive up the road from um, where were we? Engine Ups Natural Spa is a place called Canal Rocks, and we basically just drove in, took a look at how busy the road was, the car park was, walked around for about one minute, if that, and had to get out of there. It's just absolute chaos. Yeah. We we tend to travel during quiet periods, so we're not used to this busy stuff that's going on. But anyways, it would be a beautiful area. Surely. We have, however, come back to this other place, which is on the way in. It's called the Aquarium, where we're allowed to go for snorkel and all that sort of gear. There's a few cars around, but we're thinking because it's snorkeling and there's a bit of a track to get into, it might be a little bit quieter. Hopefully. That's the hope. Fingers <laughs> crossed. If not, we're going to go find a brewery. I think that's probably a better bet. It'll still be busy, but we can hide from <laughs> people. And they have beer. They do. Tends right. to calm you. I do want to go for a snorkel. I want to see what's going on. So do I. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. We could definitely see the appeal of going for a snorkel through here. Unfortunately, 40 to 50 other people also thought it was a great idea to go for a snorkel at the same time as us. So unfortunately, there wasn't a lot of sea life to be seen and the water was actually quite cold. So we decided to pull the pin on the snorkel, head off down the road and try and find somewhere nice and quiet for lunch.
Beautiful. Uh, great spot for lunch. We're at um, Castle Rock Beach, I think it's called, or Castle Rock Bay. Tried a few of the other places, but they were just crazy busy. So I went for a bit of a drive and found this one to be nice and quiet. Water is beautiful and clear. Bit of seaweed floating around, but that's nothing. Sand is nice, and yeah, just sort of sit down, have a picnic lunch, and go for a swim. Now, we're going to a brewery. I think Jess wants ice cream at first, though, so we'll get Jess ice cream, then we'll go to the brewery. Woohoo! Let's go! <laughs> Well, that place was um, a little different. Beers were nice and everything like that, but there was just, it was no quiet. Atmosphere. There was nobody around, no atmosphere, no vibe. Uh, when we originally rocked up, we were kind of like, is it open? Are we supposed to be here? It just felt a little bit weird, so. Yeah. Seems yeah. to be more of a local's haunt than a um, tourist attraction. Yeah, but when we say that, including us, there was about five people there in total, so. Yeah. But um, beers were good. But yeah, on to the next one. Yep. Speaking of which. Quickly, before they shut. Here's the keys. We've got about an hour. Let's go. Feel better here? Yeah, this place feels yeah, better vibe, better environment. I won't say the beer's better yet because I've only tried one. Very cool. Off to a good start. So that much. Cheeky monkey, absolutely cracker of a brewery. Really, really liked there. Great beers, great vibe. Good view. Good view over the dam and the lake and that sort of thing. Um, but that's probably where we're gonna leave Margaret River. What was your favourite? Favourite place, um, favourite thing, not just... Favourite place, favourite thing... Mine, I was, thought, oh. mine was Colonial colonial Brewery. For something different. Yeah, for something different. <laughs> um, I really thought Jewel Cave was really something to mm. um, go and do and see. Um, if you've got the money to spend, then yeah, it, it's a good tour. Yeah. Um, learnt a few new things. Yeah, we had Lily, I think, yep. as the tour guide. She was really helpful, really smart. Yep. Yeah, it was good. It was good. Um, as for traveling during school holidays, obviously a lot of people can only travel during those times because that's the only holidays that they get and that's fine, but this is kind of reaffirmed to us while we try to lay low during those times. We still had a great time through Margaret River, but yeah, we'll probably lay low next school holidays. I think so, yeah. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. Um, please make sure to give the video a like. Subscribe so you don't miss where we end up next week. Bye for now.